Good evening, Professor Ray's Biological Anthropology class. I'm field amateur Daniel Blackhorse, and tonight I'll be discussing with you what it means and when it means to be a Denisovan. Much like Kermit here, you might be wondering why Denisovan lives even matter in our ancestral timeline. And before we get into that, I'd like to give you some history and background on the cave where this population was found itself. So the Denisova cave itself was first discovered in the Siberian region or the Altai mountain range um, in the late 70s by a group of Soviet scientists. The nearest inhabited village is Chornu Ainui, um, and the local ethnic population, the Altais, refer to the Denisova cave as the Bear Cave. And in fact, um, it was um, believed to actually have been um, occupied by in the 18th century by an old believer hermit, um, which is a sect of hermits that are an offshoot of the uh, Russian Orthodox Church. So naturally, this cave holds a kind of special place in local lore and legend. The cave itself is formed out of Silurian sandstone, approximately 28 meters above the uh, right bank. And um, the cave itself is actually uh, 270 square meters. And the central chamber is about 9 meters wide by 11 meters high with arched ceilings. And this is according to a uh, blogspot website that is run by uh, Russian archaeologists. So paleontologists and archaeologists both agree the, the cave's findings are quite fascinating. Uh, we do still know very little about the Denisovans, but what we do know about the cave is that it exchanged occupations roughly 13 times. And basically what that means is that including the Denisovans and the Neanderthals, um, the cultural context of modern humans also existed within that cave to present day. One of the more interesting things about this cave is that it maintained a relative temperature of around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that allowed for is the preservation of soft tissue on bones. And unlike our Australopithecus ancestors, um, we believe that the occupation of this cave wasn't caused by predators. Um, in fact, the Neanderthals and the Denisovans and the modern human populations um, that occupied this cave were probably the apex in the area. Pictured here is a Denisovan three type pinky, um, which was ex excavated from the cave in 2009, and this was provided by SciNews.com. Um, and according to an article published in September 20th of 2019, when they were able to finally uh, decode um, some of the DNA found in this pinky, um, a uh, down to earth, which is an academic publication, uh, revealed that um, Denisovans are more like Neanderthals than they are humans. Um, and so uh, the team used DNA data from two Neanderthals, five ancient and 55 present day humans, and five chimpanzees, in addition to the Denisovan finger bone. Um, according to the study published in the journal cell. Uh, the results identified 56 anatomical features in which Denisovans have differed from modern humans and or Neanderthals. Of these 34 features differed in the skull, they had wide heads and long dental arches, a potential adaptation for big teeth. The researchers have also found that the ancient hominins shared many traits with Neanderthals, low foreheads and wide rib cages, an elongated face and a wide pelvis. However, their fingertip was slender like humans, not thick like the Neanderthal fingers, um, the science magazine Nature reported. Um, and according to researchers, uh, this novel approach could have a wide range of potential applications. Um, they can help predict uh, traits such as behavior um, which, of course, outside of material culture, isn't found in the fossil record. Because I'm not a Denisovan and I don't have to hunt for my food, 
I'm going to allow a 30 to 45 second intermission for you to copy down the general traits of what makes a Denisovan separate from a Neanderthal and a modern human. In the meantime, I'm gonna order tacos. So enjoy this music. Ah, uh, yes, those tacos were delicious. I see you're back with more questions. It's good to know the history of the cave and what makes Denisovans unique from Neanderthals and from humans, but I bet you're wondering about their population distribution and their temporality, or in other words, the time that they existed. According to one sciencealert.com article, we know frustrating little about the geographic distribution and demography of the Denisovans except that Aboriginal Australians and New Guineans are the only people alive today with substantial amounts of Denisovan DNA in their genome. Due to the cohesive research efforts of scientists around the world, fossils and DNA traces of Denisovans are found from at least 200,000 to 50,000 years ago, and those of Neanderthals from between 200,000 and 100,000 years ago. The girl with mixed ancestry who the pinky came from, reveals that the two groups of homonyms met and interbred around 100,000 years ago. Although Denisovans persisted at the site until 50,000 years ago, this does not preclude their later survival elsewhere. They were evidently a hardy bunch living through multiple episodes of the cold Siberian climate before finally going extinct. Despite using highly scientific optical dating methods to stratify the sediment, and analyze some of the material culture that was left behind the Denisovans, as well as finding mixed uh, fragments of fossils where there's traces of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA, scientists are still relatively unclear about the Denisovan timeline. And as research develops, uh, hopefully it will tell us more about their population distribution and demography as well as what their encounters would have been like with modern humans, as well as the Neanderthals. In the next clip, I've provided the dates that are relevant so far, as well as the ones mentioned earlier, uh, provided by sciencealert.com. I bet you're probably wondering if we have any specific examples from the fossil record that we've collected where we can create a virtual reconstruction or a skeleton, much like we did with Australopithecus and Lucy. And in fact, we do, and her name is Denny. As I had mentioned earlier, much of what we know about the Denisovans was extracted from this pinky bone that was found that led us to believe that Denisovans had more human-like fingers. And to really fully appreciate uh, this discovery, it's important to know that scientists dug around um, 3,000 fossils in a site that, again, has exchanged hands more than 13 times by different populations. Scientists sifted through thousands of bone fragments, and it's important to remember that the cave not only had human occupants, but also animal inhabitants as well, things that existed during this time that are no longer here, such as cave lions and cave bears and cave hyenas, which would frequently bring in their prey or scavenge their food from the cave and continue to chew up fossils and confuse our fossil timeline. So getting back to Denny, uh, scientists use a mass spectrometer, or a process uh, abbreviated as zooms, um, 
to identify um, whether or not the bone was actually human. And it's important to know that zooms can only tell if a bone comes from a member of the hominidae family, um, which also includes great apes. Um, it can't differentiate within the group. So to find out specifically what they were dealing with, researchers took uh, this specific sample to a uh, anthropological team in Leipzig in Germany um, who had first sequenced the Denisovan genome in 2010. Um, initial analysis using the dating process known as methylation showed that the bone was more than 50,000 years old and from a person who had been 13 years or older when they died. They even further discovered that um, the sample consisted of Neanderthal DNA. The other half was made up of Denisovan. Um, at first, they had assumed that the sample had been contaminated, but they retested and confirmed. And this is the, our first example um, of a person of mixed ancestry, half Neanderthal and half Denisovan. And what this indicates, again, is the interbreeding between these populations. However, it's important to note that the DNA between Neanderthals and Denisovans are distinct, which means that frequent interbreeding was probably unlikely. According to this London Observer article that I've been referencing um, for quite some time now, um, scientists seem to think that it actually suggests that the Denisova cave itself um, was an outpost at the edge of the range of both species. And occasionally, um, the species would cross paths here and it would lead to amorous consequences. So from this, we get Denny. Now, it's important to remember that Denny is not a full skeleton, rather a um, vir pretty much a virtual reconstruction based on the DNA sequence of the Denisovans um, that have been processed using methylization. What you see here is an artist's rendition of what Denny probably would have looked like. So Denny is a good example of why we should consider our ethics when we decide to label uh, a species less than human. Granted, Neanderthals and Denisovans and humans all have genetic differences. However, it seems like that the Neanderthals and Denisovans were able to communicate, to cohabitate, and have relationships in a way that was beneficial to both groups. When it comes to Denisovan technology and diet, very little is known um, until another rather large dig site is found that is exclusively Denisovan. We're not going to know a lot about their material culture. We do know that they existed during an overlap period of Neanderthals and modern humans. So we can hypothesize that they shared this material culture um, or that there was some cross-transference, even though the interbreeding was not frequent. Um, now, when it comes to diet, we still know that uh, early hominid diets were still largely plant-based until they began developing tools to hunt animals, in which case we can guess that they started eating meat at some point. Um, the interesting thing is, is that Denisovans have the uh, bitter taste receptor turned off, which means that they were probably able to eat things that modern day humans couldn't. And it's somewhat safe to draw the inference, given that Denny's dad was Denisovan and her mother was Neanderthal. And knowing that Neanderthals did like to occasionally eat meat, um, and at one point her being pregnant with Denny, that the Denisovans participated in these hunting parties. 
especially given the fact that the Denisova cave itself seems to be somewhat of a communal property shared by both Neanderthals and Denisovans, and including, somewhere in that mix, modern humans. <laughs> Loneliness is the coat you wear. A deep shade of blue is always. 